Congratulations on progressing your game this far. This is tutorial 11 in the Flutter Flame 1.0 series. The objective of this lesson is to auto-populate the platforms. So these individual sprite components, we're going to drop down 10 of them and we're going to use a loop. This is not the best way to actually put the platforms on your game. Uh, the purpose of this is just to show you that you can use this platform class and auto populate. In your actual game, you'll probably use a map editor, uh, for example, like tile D, and then you'll put something like um, a tree on it this way, and then save the data. But that's a um, it's a little bit more complex. We we'll have to use another library. So we're going to use this loop just to auto populate it for this stage. There are currently 19 videos in this tutorial series. Uh, this video is slotted in after flame number 10. The previous video, you positioned the individual platforms with the anchor. Uh, so, so you might want to subscribe to the channel as we'll be updating this as we go along. The code for the video is also available on GitHub and it's arranged into different branches. So if you want to get a specific point in time, for the tutorials, you can actually get access to the branch or download the full code. Okay, let's get straight into the code here. So first, let's create a new function so that we can initialize the platforms. Well, let's call it a init platform and then start it off as a standard Dart uh, function. We're not initially not passing it any other uh, parameters into that function, so the round brackets will be blank. Then go down to where you initialized the platform sprites previously and then drop it in between the curly brackets for the body of your function. So we got it set up right now here as a separate function. Let's go on. Okay, next we're going to pass in the sprite uh, parameter so that we have that. Uh, you need to load the actual sprite from the PNG file in the onload method. So then when we call up this function in it platform it'll have the the sprite that we created from the frame the flame library for the sprite in the onload method run the the function that you just created and pass it in a sprite then run your or reload your application and make sure that it still works it's all good Next, create a for loop, which we're going to loop through and have the maybe 10 platforms on here for our game. We're not going to pass it in any uh, list for the coordinates, but I think you can imagine that uh, if we had a list of coordinates, we could easily uh, position each platform based on those coordinates. However, we'd probably want to use a map editor to get those coordinates. So for this example, we're just going to loop it through uh, 10 times and then use the uh, integer value of the loop for the position. To position the platform on either the left or right hand side of the width of the screen, we're going to use a, simpler, a simple modulo operator, right? So that's that kind of weird operator, it looks like a percentage sign, but all that does is it gives you the remainder of it. So if the remainder is zero, it's gonna be an even number. And if, it's, uh, if the remainder is not zero, it will be an odd number. So we can just check to see, you know, maybe assign um, one side, the, the even right and the odd left, for example. So if the remainder is zero, let's place it on the left-hand side of the screen. And if it's not zero, let's place it on the right-hand side of the screen. In order to place it all the way on the right-hand side of the screen, we're going to need to know the size of the screen. Uh, fortunately, the base game class from Flutter, or from Flame, does have the size. So if we just pass the size over to the function init platform, we'll know the size of the entire game. And with the size, or maybe to be clear, let's call it uh, screen size. And so with the screen size, 
uh, we can then, the first coordinate of the list is going to, uh, so screen size 0 is going to be x, screen size 1 is y. And with that, we know the width and height of the screen. Change the y position of each platform uh, using the i in your for loop and just multiply it by some value. Let's try 100 and see how it looks. We're going to have to adjust the spacing a bit more. Not all 10 platforms are on the screen. I'm also going to make the platform smaller. Cut down the size right there in the vector. Delete the extra platform that we have from previously when we're editing the code. That's outside of the loop. Get a feel for the vertical spacing of the platform to try to get all 10 platforms on the screen. We know the size of the game screen, so we could just move to the size of the game screen, but uh, sometimes manually doing it, you get, you get a better feel for how to move the platforms around. We already have the size variable. So the second uh, index in the size list is the height. The first one would be the width. So let's use the, the, uh, the height and divide it by 11. I'm going to make the platform slightly wider. Let's move the boy to the lower right hand side of the screen. Ideally the girl would be jumping between the platforms and then the boy will have some space there in the, the lower right hand side of the screen and that will be the goal. Maybe it be, become like um, Donkey Kong, but in reverse, where it's the girl that's trying to save the boy from some monster or something. If the anchor of the boy is in the bottom right of where the boy is, we can just set his position to the size of the screen. Congratulations on getting this far in your platformer game. In the next video, we're going to take these beautiful Flutter icon buttons. They're the new buttons in Flutter 2. And add them onto our flame screen so that we can control the movement of the character in a horizontal uh, direction. So stay tuned and maybe subscribe to the channel so that you can get an update when we add these beautiful icon buttons from Flutter onto our game so we can control whether the girl is moving side to side. See you soon.